Isaac, welcome to Mekon. We finally made hello, it. Hello. Hey. We made it. <laughs> Where in the world are you? Are you calling in from today? I'm calling in from Bangkok, Thailand. Okay, very cool. I know the last time I spoke to you, what, you were in Sri Lanka, you've been to Dubai, you've been all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it's sourcing, been a great time. Sourcing the world's best merchandise. I love it. Exactly. I mean, it's <laughs> such a supply chain mess right now. Um, that it's super important, in my opinion, to you know, branch out of China, find different, you know, backup suppliers, etc. Um, and now it's, I think even though with COVID, it's still a great time to travel and see the world. So I'm so excited for people to, you know, learn about you. You're um, one of the coolest entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs as well that I've met. And, uh, you know, we really love what you're doing and, 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 you know, it's just providing so much value for, for artists and just for digital, you know, entrepreneurs in general, people that are building their brand, they need merch, they need to figure out how to crack this code, build their e-commerce store. So how did you get started with Imprint Genius? Yeah, so I uh, got into the merchandise space about five years ago. Um, one of my main things was how can, you know, I add technology to this pretty ancient industry and make things more efficient. Uh, there's lots of inefficiencies. And uh, with the height of print on demand you know, and, new, and new printing technology, you know, pushing that into uh, modern day e-commerce is super important. And it got me excited. And over the last five years, I've been able to, you know, build a, a, a real business around that model. So you work with, I know a lot of like A-list artists and you're working with some major labels and getting to do some really cool things, um, building out their stores, all of that. Um, but also for the startup artists as well, who are trying to get into, you know, into the merch space, not everybody can work yet with Imprint Genius, although we're going to be coaching you along the way so you can really get the expertise of companies like this. But for someone who's just getting started building their brand, building their website, all of that, where do you think, where should they be starting when they're thinking about merchandise? The cool thing is today too, I don't think a lot of people know that you really don't need a dollar of overhead other than of course, just getting the right ecosystem set up, getting the right website and all of that. But where would you think, what, what's a good place for people to start? Yeah, I mean, first off, you're exactly right. Uh, there's a big misconception that you need all this infrastructure uh, to start selling merchandise. You need to have inventory, you need to do all your fulfillment. Uh, there's so many modern day solutions and it gets super easy. So. Uh, the best way to do it is to leverage print on demand. Uh, there's tons of really great vendors out there uh, that make it super easy to set things up, uh, such as Printful, Printify. And in my opinion, there's lots of ways to actually launch your store, but the best way to launch it and have a scalable model would be starting with Shopify. So you open up a Shopify store, you can use a pre-existing theme, you can honestly build it yourself, and you can have an entire merchandise store up and live in probably an hour to two hours time. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not super savvy in that, you know, it might take me like five or 10 hours to do it would take you an hour. Um, where would you think, can people go to Fiverr? Are there areas or places where people could get like freelance support to help setting up some of this stuff? Definitely. So when you're starting out, Fiverr can be a really good resource uh, for either to, you know, build your custom template, design the actual site, um, as well as you're going to need designs, right? So if you don't have your designs ready, uh, Fiverr is going to be a really great place to, you know, start experimenting. And that's, and that's another thing with designs. Um, because it's print on demand, you can really take risks. In the past, you had to go and buy 500 t-shirts, right? And if you had a design you weren't sure about, it doesn't sell, now you're stuck with all the inventory. The beauty of print on demand is that the products are only produced uh, when they're ordered. So you can have five designs, you can have a thousand designs. Um, it's not going to affect how your store uh, functions or your inventory or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Or cost you a dollar more. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a new project rolling out, maybe a new single, you want to create some merchandise just for that print some of the lyrics on a shirt, on a pillowcase, on a mug. Um, I'm sure you've seen some really interesting things that, that artists are doing. Can you, you know, maybe give some examples of 
what an artist could be thinking of, you know, how to get a little more unique than just your name or your logo. And what are their kind of like cool, you know, items are available that um, that you've seen work? Yeah, so I, I think that's another big misconception is that artist merchandise needs to be t-shirts and hoodies, right? Um, you can, we're seeing a fantastic conversion and a lot higher margins on tons of other uh, categories of products. And we're really bullish, you know, uh, in the future of uh, that, those categories being like the best for artists. Examples are gonna be, like you said, pillows or custom jewelry or tapestries, um, unique headwear, unique print methods on the actual merchandise. You can print on shoes even. Um, print on demand is it, the technology is growing and growing and growing. And I would I think that the best way uh, for you to really stand out with your merchandise is to experiment and play with the really unique stuff. Yeah, I love that. And then when you're thinking about building your store, like what are some of the do's and don'ts? Um, I know that you've been rebuilding and redesigning even some stores for some pretty major artists. I uh, won't name any names just yet, uh, but, but what are some of the mistakes that you see people make? Yeah, so um, a lot of people will think that, you know, I need to build something full, full custom and I can't use pre-existing templates or utilize um, apps on the stores that are uh, gonna help you do well. The thing with uh, making a full custom site is it's really nice in the beginning, right? But then for example, your music style slightly changes and your new album uh, kind of changes the feel of your, of your brand and trying to then adapt that full custom site is a lot more difficult. And then you start running into um, overall problems with like the look and feel. So what I would say is uh, try to utilize as much pre-existing out of the box um, themes, templates, applications, and that's gonna keep you super flexible um, with your store. Another thing is uh, actually utilizing uh, all these applications that are out there. Uh, you, shouldn't, you should really treat your merchandise store as a business, as an e-commerce business, as if you, know, you were selling a regular product direct to consumer. By utilizing the top trends, um, such as abandoned checkout emails, um, essentially having uh, one-click upsells, having discounts if they purchase multiple products, um, having SMS marketing. These are some of the current trends that are happening within D2C. If you're able to utilize that and treat your, customer, uh, your fans kind of the same way, you're able to see much better conversions um, on your overall store. Where can people, you mentioned, you know, really treating this like an e-commerce business. So are there any um, books you might suggest or blogs or podcasts or just individuals out there that you follow and things that people can go to learn more about that or like online courses? Yeah, I mean, so uh, I would say that the like online courses are consistently changing. Shopify has some really great like baseline um, courses and then you can um, I would say attending events is a really great way as well um, it's hard to say you know what my favorite course is uh, for e-commerce but having a basic uh, foundation in Facebook ads is actually going to help you a ton and it doesn't necessarily have to be like the Facebook ads that people normally think of right how am I trying to go and attract new people to buy my merchandise a lot of times understand the, the fundamentals of of you know media buying is going to be, how can I retarget that person that abandoned checkout, right? How can I push my merchandise, my new line of merchandise to all, all the different fans that may be interacted with a post on Instagram? Um, sometimes, you know, all, it, all, all the person needs is just a couple more pushes and then they're gonna actually go and convert. And I think a lot of artists leave a ton of money on the table by not, um, doing any kind of media buying for the merchandise store. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a couple of pushes, right? So you can't just make, <clears throat> excuse me, one post on social media and your Instagram or do a TikTok or something and expect that people are going to jump and buy or be disappointed when you don't sell out, right? Um, <laughs> and so how many touch points would you say or how many different ways 
Um, do we need to be marketing to our fan base to actually push them to that store, get them to make that sale? Um, and do you have any recommendations on the, the type of content that's really going to get a fan there? Yeah, so I would say that 10 touch points is like a pretty baseline, you know, mm -hmm. I think most people are going to need 10 touch points before they can actually convert. Um, it really varies, you know, artist to artist and store to store. But um, I think that having as much um, content that feels like organic. So, you know, instead of having just a picture of the merchandise and you're posting it, you know, you being the artist going and showing yourself in the merchandise, showing other people in the merchandise, making it interactive, making it funny, making it engaging. Um, at the end of the day, uh, merchandise, especially artist merchandise, is an emotional connection. Um, you, you've, your, your fans are connecting with you to another level uh, by physically wearing your merchandise, repping that merchandise. So just like how they're connecting that way, you need to create that emotional connection um, with content, with videos, et cetera. Yeah. And I think the key thing too is, you know, we're talking a lot today um, about super fans, building that super fan base and making sure that sure you've got them on your social media, um, but they're only going to see a couple of touch points there. You, you mentioned SMS marketing. Um, are there any key platforms that you use or have had success with? Um, so for SMS, I always like to, um, uh, focus on using agencies. So we have a couple great agencies and people can reach out to, reach out to me uh, to kind of focus on that. And then um, as for like a lot of our media buying, we have a, a direct AI partnership uh, with Practice Pioneering. And I'll, I'll talk more about that a little bit later, but that's where most of like the, the really cool advances from a technology standpoint um, are, are going and being developed with an artist merchandise. Mm -hmm. And there's platforms like Community, uh, specifically in music. I don't know if you've ever seen Superphone. We're definitely big fans of that just because of all the analytics, everything you can see on the background. So artists definitely go check that out. Um, and then getting people to your website, signing up for your newsletter. So again, they have all these different ways um, to, you know, to see your merch, to see the story, to get that emotional content um, and, and, you know, make that emotional, uh, a connection really. So take us kind of through some more of the steps of really, um, you know, converting, like what type of data, what on the back end are you paying attention to? You mentioned, you know, really looking at, okay, when people are, you know, dropping off just before purchasing all of that, like, what are some of those best practices? And for those of us who just find this whole conversation way overwhelming, <laughs> um, where can we find some professionals to help us? Yeah, so it, it really depends on kind of like the, from, from getting professional help, it really depends on like the, I guess the level that you're at. Um, it, it gets a little difficult, right? Because the best agencies are gonna have like the highest minimum, have the highest expectations. So a lot of times you're gonna have to kind of learn the fundamentals yourself learn the fundamentals of, of e-commerce yourself and have to apply that and then once you start like, get to a larger scale you can start working with you know more and more experts in those fields um from from a conversion standpoint i mean the biggest things a lot of it has to do with uh, actual designs so uh, for example what we're doing with practice is we're having um, machine learning and ai actually be able to go and figure out what designs are going to uh, convert the best. And then the machine goes and creates thousands and thousands of designs and then continually runs that model. And then is able to go and figure out, okay, Billie Eilish is going to need a purple hoodie with this kind of design on it. And, and we're gonna market it to these people and we're gonna price it this amount. And it, it's, a, it's really a, a big data game, but it's kind of crazy how you can take all this data in and optimize and create the perfect uh, design for that super fan. So then would you suggest, hey, make a bunch of different designs as you're first getting started and really testing out and kind of getting some feedback of, you know, what works, what not work, you know, what's not gonna work. I'm sure there's mm -hmm. kind of a bit of a trial and error process, right? 
Exactly. And, and don't be afraid to use your fan base. People love to interact. So having a quick Instagram uh, poll and showing two different designs that you have on your computer screen and say, hey, which one do you guys like better, right? And put a bunch of options out there and let people actually vote, right? Because these are the people that are going to be actually going and converting and purchasing that product. Um, so now they're seeing in advance, they get excited about it. Well, the one I picked actually ended up being a t-shirt. Now I really want to buy it. Um, I would say that's probably the, the easiest way to go and kind of figure out what's going to look yeah. for you. And you probably have some fans that are great graphic designers as well that might exactly. actually love to submit some designs. And then, you know, maybe you offer to do a rev share with them on the back end or, hey, they're just now going to be your super fan because, you know, they help to design it. So I've, you know, heard a lot of stories like that lately, especially of, you know, super fans who are becoming the part of the team in some way, but you got to kind of put it out there and ask. And how cool is that to really involve them even more so in the project? 100%. That, that's definitely a fantastic way to go and get designs. So are there any other really key like nuts and bolts that people need to know about how to navigate this, how to drive more sales? What, what suggestions might you have? Yeah, I would say that Again, like that fundamental, just treat it like a like a real e-commerce store. Like make it look nice, right? Make it uh, get excited about different products you're going to launch. Uh, be involved with it. It can be a major, major revenue source for you. And luckily with Prime Demand, it can almost be passive, right? Where you don't have to do any of the fulfillment yourself. You don't have to do any of the printing yourself. You're just selling the goods. And then, and then a third-party company is doing all that work for you. Um and just be think outside the box you know it's a lot more than t-shirts you can do uh so figure out what, what works for your exact you know fan base and so you, and have fun with it you've mentioned printful you've mentioned uh i know there's teespring uh what mm -hmm. are there are there any other particular um uh, platforms that do this that you might you know suggest again kind of the the newer artists who are just stepping into this and then later we're going to talk about how people can actually work with you and your company yeah i mean so i think that um a, a great way to find them are just going to go type in print on demand um within like the shopify app store and a lot of different printers or um, aggregator type companies have specialties, right? So there's gonna be some that specialize in super high quality prints or high quality blanks, some that can do custom, you know, socks. There are ones that are gonna print with more sustainable materials. Uh, you can actually mix and match your print on demand suppliers um, for the most part. Now you're gonna have multiple ship points at certain points, but um, it really depends. Uh, that, that there isn't the perfect printer for anyone, but I would always say like, you could start with the big guys like Printful or Printify because they're gonna have the widest, uh, widest, widest overall catalog uh, that's gonna help you, you know, really experiment with products. And they have jewelry and things like that. You mentioned some of that or are those maybe different, different um, companies that, that we need to find? Yeah, so it depends. So there are some, you know, more not the best jewelry from like a print on demand perspective because a lot of that has to be custom dyed uh but what's nice is that you know something for example that we offer is hybrid based programming so you can have um print on demand mixed in with high volume screen printing and inventory so what that looks like is you have an inventory position in your jewelry which takes up very little space tends to have very high margins maybe you're buying the jewelry for a dollar fifty each and you're selling them for 15 right so you can, you can take more of a risk on that, have that in inventory, and then couple that with, you know, a hundred different designs that are all print on demand. And then you have also in stock, maybe that one new, you know, tour teacher t-shirt that you know is going to convert super well. And then you, you're already purchasing a ton of them for that tour to sell in person, right? So creating that hybrid based model, gives you that overall flexibility and to the, to the actual and fan that's purchasing, they can't tell the difference. Um, it's all about maximizing options uh, and profit while minimizing risk. Mm -hmm. And I think another important thing to, you know, to discuss, especially here, we're talking about music entrepreneur, like how to maximize the money coming in, right? And so 
your fans do a lot more than care about your brand and your music, right? They have mm -hmm. birthdays, they have holidays, they have different reasons that maybe they're into health, like figure out what your brand really stands for and mm -hmm. then possibly drive active wear, drive other things that they're just going to utilize in their everyday life. But they know, hey, if I buy it here through you, I'm supporting my favorite artist. I'm supporting their career. Maybe bake it in. Hey, I've launched, you know, all these additional cool products because I'm trying to, you know, hit a certain goal that I can uh, uh, get into the studio and record my next project. I really let them know that how their support in your store and the things that they purchase are really going to, you know, affect your business in the long run. So I think there's a lot of different ways to go about it and thinking beyond just like, you know, your, your next song um, or your personal artist brand and the stuff that you can create for your, for your own brand. I, I think you hit that, you know, right in the head. Um, it, it, you really want to, you know, tell the story and create that connection and uh if you can do act, active wear is booming right now as another category um you know creating even brand partnerships uh making a custom maybe you want to uh you want to make water bottles for your merchandise store and there's a eco-friendly water bottle company that you know saves turtles and you really have that deep connection with them so reach out to them see if you can do a partnership and make some custom bottles and make that part of your merchandise store. Another thing I forgot to mention that I think that people uh, people don't really do in the industry that is very effective is actually um, offering gift cards on the store to, for your store, virtual mm -hmm. gift cards. Mm -hmm. The reason behind that is because a lot of purchasing um, on art, artist merchandise stores is actually for other people as gifts, right? Um, but sometimes you don't know exactly what they want, right? Or maybe you, you're remembering it three days before their birthday and you can't get it uh, in time. So having a gift card uh, option on the store lets that person, significant other, friend, et cetera, go and purchase that virtual gift card. And, you know, it, it really still means a lot because they know, oh, wow, he really knows that, you know, that person knows that I love this artist. And now I can go to whatever I want. Wow, that's such a great idea. I didn't even think about that. So I love that point. So we've got starting, you know, starting artists that 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 are um, are tuning in right now, but we've also got the scaling artists, right, who really have a significant fan base and are ready to take that to the next level. How could someone work for you or work with with you and your team? Um, what are you guys looking for, you know, in terms of artists that you will work with? Uh, walk us through that process a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So um, our main goals is to. Um, truly help scale stores. So um, most of our work has been, you know, utilizing uh, hybrid-based supply chain systems, optimizing the actual store for conversion, and then integrating with our AI partner to um, make the store, um, like add different ad sets, add, add all the AI functionality that's gonna help it grow. And we've already seen tons of success you know, taking multi, multi-million dollar storefronts and doubling them within a year uh, wow. within the artist merchandise space, utilizing the different AI technology, uh, like, you know, through our partner, our partner with uh, partnership. So how it works is we focus on the supply chain, the hybrid based supply chain systems. They focus on all the ads and the AI to actually make it effective. And, you know, I mean, uh, total about $500 million in, in gross value of artist merchandise flowing through uh, the machine. So you have a ton of ton of data and then being able to then take all that data and apply it uh, to that store uh, is what can take a regular store um, that is just like a merch store into a real e-commerce business. Mm -hmm. So how can people find you if they think that they're ready to work with a team like yours? Uh, what's the next step that they take? Yeah, definitely. So. Um, you can reach our websites, imprintgenius.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Isaac Hetz. Um, you can send me a DM. Uh, it's very personal. We like to have a you know, great relationship with all of our customers. Even if you guys, if someone's not at the stage, you have any questions, shoot me a DM. I'm happy to see if I can help in any way. Um, but, you know, if it is a good fit, you know, we're always looking for, for new people to work with, new artists to, you know, help scale. Very cool. 
And for those watching, please let us know, you know, where you're at with your e-commerce store. Is this something that you've tried yet? You haven't tried, you know, what are the challenges you're running into? What are the questions that you're running into? We're going to pull Isaac back into the music entrepreneur community in January, uh, and they can do some kind of a workshop for us. So we want to know, you know, where you're at, where you need help with, um, and get you to the next level. So Isaac, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for dropping all those gems. Um, and one last question that I have for you is, what is one of your like biggest success tips just for entrepreneurs in general? You run a company, you run a team, um, you know, you, you are now traveling the world. I'm sure there's been a lot of successes and a lot of failures along the way. How do you handle mm -hmm. those challenges? And, and what do you think is most important for really bringing a long-term team together? Definitely, I, I would say um, always be ready to pivot. Um, mm -hmm. The world's always changing. Uh, Technology is changing. Um, sometimes you can get you can feel really invested and stuck in your ways and feel like oh, I've been working on this idea for so long. Um, the best opportunities are going to come from a lot of time from hardship and from, from challenges that are going to happen. Um, be okay with changing how you changing up how you do things, and um, you'll always stay ahead of the curve and you'll be able to you know uh, thrive. So that that's my tip. Pivoting, pivoting. We've, we've got a whole conversation on that from Dr. Cheryl Robinson, who actually has a PhD. She finished her dis dissertation last year, uh, all about pivoting in, in business. So I think you're right on. That's just one of the key things, right? Because we think we have this great idea. We go, 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 go. And we realize like, shit, maybe it's not going to work. Maybe it's not the best idea. Do I keep, you know, pressing on or just do I make a decision to, to go another way? Because um, you know, everything that, that we do in life is, is, is really just a, an, an educated guess, a hypothesis of what's going to work. And we have to be okay with sometimes they don't work. Like sometimes our ideas are bad. Uh, so we got to go a different way. And like you, you said, things are changing so quickly. So anyway, thanks so much for your time. Uh, enjoy your world travels. Where are you going to next? Oh, um, I'm going to be uh, bouncing around uh, different areas of Thailand, visiting some different apparel factories, jewelry factories out here. And then I'm going to be heading over to the Philippines to see our team. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to be following your journey and uh, <laughs> can't wait to see what's next. Definitely. Thanks so much. It was great chatting.